Today we're breaking some rules in Photoshop. Hey guys, welcome to Flurn. My name is Aaron Nace. You can find me on Twitter at AKNacer. You can find me on Flurn. We make these videos five days a week for you to help you get better at Photoshop and photography and life also. That's right, life. <laughs> Today we're editing one of our family's images. This is Joaquim's image. He submitted it in our form, which is up there. You can find, um, we'll link to it up there and down below. It's in the contact suggest an episode and you guys can suggest your images to be edited here on Flurn. And we're gonna be editing another one tomorrow. So if you guys want your image edited, be sure to submit it in that comment box or the, the form that's up there. We got so many different names for things. Today we're doing something really, really cool. Um, we're going to help separate the subject from the background. This is not my image, it's Joaquim's, but we're going to do some things that are kind of going to break the rules in Photoshop, but you're going to see sometimes it really doesn't matter. Um, you can you can break the rules and still get away with it and still get a great image. So here's what I want to do um, with this image. And the, the big thing that's kind of distracting me, the, what's getting my attention in this image, I always try to look at an image and kind of like squint my eyes and zooming out helps as well. Um, basically, it's like, what do your eyes look at first? And in my, you know, when I look at this, I look at this bright dress over here, and that looks good. And then I look at the sky. Now, it's not always a horrible thing, but the sky definitely detracts from the subject. Like, I, I want to really just be looking at my subject and the sky doesn't really need to be there. Like, I like the composition of the image. Like, it, it looks good. It's it's not ill composed or anything like that. But the sky is just, it's a little bit too bright in my opinion, and it's taking away from the dress. So we're gonna do some things, and um, we're just gonna completely get rid of this guy, and then we're gonna do some very, very cool things with color toning. I think you're gonna love them. All right, so how do we get rid of a sky? Well, you could just try to darken it down, but in this case, we have all this nice rock. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna select some of this rock and, duplicate it and move it over. And that's not always like the best thing to do, but because we're gonna be darkening quite a bit of this image up, and I'm gonna show you guys some great techniques for that, um, it's gonna really not matter, trust me. It doesn't matter if you do something like this, especially if you're really, really darkening down what you're gonna be doing. Okay, so I grabbed my lasso tool and just selected that area, and I'm gonna hit Command J with the selection that's gonna put it on a new layer. So now I can use my move tool and I can just click and drag. You can see that's the rock and I can do this, you know, put it wherever I want to. All right, let's just put it there for right now. You can see it's it blends in pretty well. I mean, it's just rock and then more rock. I mean, it's an exact duplicate, but it doesn't look that bad. Now, the next thing I wanna do real quick is to make another selection. So here again with my lasso tool, I'm gonna make another selection and this is going to be where the border to the rock and the sky is going to be. So I want to select this slightly on the inside of these rocks. I don't really want my sky to be in a selection because we're going to wind up getting rid of the sky. Okay, and we'll bring that up there and around over there and finish it off. Great. So now that's a selection. So what we've got here is a selection for the sky. This is where we're going to have this rock going to be and the actual rock. What I'm going to do is click on my layer mask and it's going to load in my selection that I had to my layer mask. So if I hold Alter Option, you can see that's what my layer mask looks like. It's only visible where the sky is. Now, this is the same layer where that other rock is, but you can't see it, obviously, because it's making that part of it dark. So what I'm going to do is I want to move this rock here into the sky. But if I move both of these, what happens is the layer and the layer mask both move with each other. And that's not really what I want. I want to be able to move the layer and the layer mask independently. I like I want the layer mask to stay in the same place. That's basically defining where the sky is. And I want to be able to move the layer, the layer, whatever's in the layer separately. So to do that, let me just hold down control and then I'll zoom in here. You can see there's a little chain link between these two. If you click that, it'll unlink them. So click on that and you can unlink them and that will let you move just one element of your layer and your layer mask is going to stay in the same place. If you wanted to move your layer mask, so you could do that too, but I don't really want to do that. I just want to move my layer. So this is what we're going to do. We're moving the layer and I can kind of figure out where I want this to be visible here. Now, the other cool thing is like if I needed to make it a little bit bigger, I could do that um, just with my move tool and kind of stretch it around. There we go. Something like that looks pretty good and I'm going to hit enter. So that allows me to kind of see what I'm doing here and not really worry about you know, the, the transition between the two. I can just move this bit of rock over and 
that's gonna stay the same. So when you're done with that, um, you just wanna be sure to, let's just zoom in there so you can see it. Um, you don't have to zoom in, by the way, to click on this chain link. I'm just showing it to you so you can see it a little bit better. It's a good idea to just link those back together because now if you wanna move it, they'll just they'll move together now. Okay, now we can see like already, this is not, even though it's not perfect up there, it's relatively dark, um, but you definitely look at your subject more. Like this is, you, you're kind of going back and forth with your vision. And now here, it's definitely like, okay, I don't even wanna look up there. It's, my eyes are just going towards my subject. So this is what we want. Okay, now what we're gonna do is kind of darken up some of these areas and give it a little bit of vignetting. And you can get creative with this. Um, I'm gonna zoom in and grab one of these dark colors from the rock. I really love this image, by the way. And I hope I'm saying your name right, Joaquim. If I'm not, feel free to correct me. I really try to get everyone's names right, but um, I, <laughs> I'm not the best at that. So um, if I'm not saying your name right, please correct me. I'm gonna grab a dark color here and something like this that's actually in my rock. So it'd be for your brush tool and then alter option to grab a color. Now I'm gonna change my layer mode from normal down here to multiply and then bring my flow to about 20%. And what I wanna do is just kind of paint around here and I really prefer doing this as opposed to just like, you know, grabbing a color and doing a fill or anything like that. Cause it, it'll kind of help you like dodge and burn at the same time. Like I'm deciding, you know, in some areas to leave a little bit of detail and some areas to keep the detail away. All right. now. Because this is like it, we're painting dark onto dark rock, it's going to look pretty good for the most part. But there are some issues that we're going to come up with. Um, basically, wherever the highlights are in the image, we can't see some of the detail there. Like it, this is going to hide some of the highlights in there, and it's going to look a little bit Photoshoppy. You can see, like it definitely looks a little Photoshoppy. So, and the term Photoshoppy, that, that's bad, by the way. <laughs> What we wanna do is we need to figure out a way to have this not really be visible on the highlights of the rock. So we want those to kind of shine through this darkness. And you can do that with apply image. Now we did this yesterday. So if you guys are still confused, basically it just takes a snapshot of your image and then puts it on your layer mask. So I'm gonna click on my layer mask here and I'm gonna to go to image and then down to apply image. Okay, and we can see it made a subtle change. Basically, what we wanna do is you want this layer to be merged, okay? You want your blending mode to be multiplied. And in this case, we do want our layer to be invert. Um, we want this not to be visible where the highlights are. Okay, and then we'll hit okay. In a second, I'm gonna show you the layer mask here. Alter option and you can click on the layer mask. And you can see all of the areas that are lighter are now not visible where this is. It's making this layer not visible where the underlying layers are lighter which is exactly what we want because it's gonna let that highlight detail show through. Now, if it doesn't do it enough, um, you basically just do it again. So we're gonna do it again. Image and then down here to apply image and hit okay. Image, apply image and hit okay again. And the more and more you do this, it's going to reveal more detail from the underlying layers, but it's still gonna let everything blend in in a very natural way. All right, let's look at the layer mask now. And you can see like the layer mask, it, it looks weird, but it looks kind of cool at the same time. And this is basically just defining where this layer with the you know multiply is visible. So I'll show you guys, here's the before um, bef without the layer mask, just shift click on there. You can see it, it kind of looks just like someone took a paintbrush and painted over there. And the after, it looks much more natural. Like the decay of light looks way more natural. Now I can turn this layer off and on. You guys can see like it definitely does its job and it looks, it looks natural, like it looks like light is actually falling off, which is great. Now I'm gonna do the same thing again. Um, we're just gonna hit multiply on a new layer and I'm gonna take this and just put a little bit more towards the edge here and maybe down there. There we go. And this is just gonna help us draw a little bit more attention to our subject. And you can even paint on the dress and stuff like that. Like that's not really that big of a deal to be honest because your layer mask is going to just prevent that. So I'm gonna click on my layer mask again and we're just gonna do the same thing over and over again. And you can see it's gonna like kind of fade away from my dress there and it's gonna do it in a way that like, it, it really makes things look good. Whoops, hit the wrong button there. I do that every now and then. All right, do this a couple times. And you can see like it, it really does a good job just fading everything in. So if you guys are having trouble you know, vignetting or adding some dark areas to an image and it just kind of looks fake, apply image is pretty much always going to do exactly what you want. And if you're darkening areas, make sure you have invert. If you want to lighten an area, make sure invert is not checked. That's the secret there.
All right, and I set up keyboard shortcut for reply images, so it's Shift Option Command A. Um, there's a episode on keyboard shortcuts last week if you guys are curious on how to do that. All right, that looks great. So we can see from the original image, we really haven't done a whole lot. Opacity's freaking out on me there. <laughs> we haven't done a whole lot, but we can see Alter Option clicking on the background layer lets you see the original. It's already a lot more focused on our subject. Just by getting rid of this area and adding some of this dark areas to, for vignetting, it helps focus in on our subject, which I really like. Like, there's nothing wrong with the original image, but I think this one's just, it helps you look at your subject a little bit more and adds a little bit more style to it as well. Okay, now from here, all I wanna do is color this image. Like, I wanna add some really nice color to this image. So this is, to be honest, this is like the most fun you're gonna have in Photoshop. Just grab a curves adjustment layer and you can do that by just going over here and going down to curves. And what you wanna do now is basically just grab this guy in your RGB channel, grab red, grab green, grab blue, grab whatever you want and take this, let's just bring this right over there. Get this little hand over there and click anywhere on your image and you can click and drag up or down and what that's gonna do, it's gonna add, like if you're on your red channel, it's gonna add more red or less red to wherever you click and you can get some really cool effects like this. So let's say right here, I wanna click here and just drag up. And that's just gonna put a little bit more red in my rocks there, which is great. Now, that's gonna drag that area. If you wanted to put even more red in this area or less red in this area, you can see red and cyan are opposites, blue and yellow are opposites, and green and magenta are opposites. So if you click and drag down on your red channel, it's gonna put more cyan there. All right, let's grab our green channel, and now let's say like, you know, these little highlights, these little rocks. Oh, I'm still on my red channel. By the way, if you don't want one of those there, you can just click and drag it off of the histogram and it'll go away. All right, the green channel, let's click up there and I want quite a bit more green to be on those little highlight areas. Maybe less green on the dress there. There we go. And that's looking good. So each time I'm clicking here, it's just kind of changing, it's adding each one of these points, and you don't have to look for these. You can do them all manually, which is perfect. Like, you don't have to try to find them over here. You just click where you want more or less of this color in your image. And I would totally recommend just doing this a couple of times and kind of like seeing what you got, because you might like what you have and you might hate it. I don't know. Um, all right, my green channel looks a little bit weird. I don't like it, so I want to just redo it, and I'm going to do that by clicking and dragging all these straight down and getting them off of there. Okay, let's redo my green channel to something maybe we like a little bit more. All right, drag this down here and then maybe up a little bit there. That's looking kind of cool. All right, we'll make that a little bit more subtle there. So this is all about playing around. And you can see like, depending on where I drag these things, like you're gonna get totally different effects. And this really helps to add some color and some interest to your image. Now you can do one layer. What I would normally do is just, I would do this a couple of times. Um, and it's totally like, <laughs> you you can have a general idea of what you want, but mostly it's just kind of playing around. To be 100% honest, it's just like, okay, uh, I think I want it to look like that. So cool, make it look like that. We'll add some green in there. I don't know what we're gonna do to the blue channel. Maybe less blue in the highlights, more blue in the shadows. And we can see just by a couple of dragging around, like we've got a completely different type of image now. The green channel is just pulled down the greens in the highlights there. All right, that looks bad. So I'm gonna drag that away. And if you spend like, you know, two or three minutes just kind of playing around here, you're gonna get something that you're gonna like. And you can combine these as well. Like it's, there's no reason why you have to use one over the other. All right, like that looks pretty cool there as well. It's not nearly as dark, but now we have, this is what we came with to begin with, and then we can add these on top of each other and kind of like change the opacities and work with each other. Like this guy, over this curves adjustment layer, for instance, I can lower the opacity quite a bit with that and then make this visible and then lower the opacity this one as well. So we can kind of combine these two. So here's just one, let's see, bring that up just a little bit more. So this layer, turning that off or on, you can see it's relatively subtle, and then this layer adds a little bit more to it. All right, and just kind of going in here and playing around with these opacities is going to change the effect of the overall image. So 
each one of these layers, you can just add more and more and more and stack them up. And I'm gonna do one more just because I want to. But this is, it's fun. Like this is totally just like, all right, let's 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 have some fun with this now. Um, there's no pressure, no stress. You're just like, okay, cool. I like it like this. Put more of that color in there. And you, the, the secret is guys, you don't have to be artistic at all, but you're gonna look artistic. That's, um, <laughs> that's what I like. People are gonna be like, ah. Oh so artistic with your colors it's amazing and you're gonna be like yeah, i know it's amazing <laughs> i know it's awesome and you're in your head you're gonna be like i don't know what i'm doing at all but um <laughs> you're gonna get something that looks kind of cool okay that looks cool too it looks a little bit more natural so you can see definitely a lot more color in there than you would normally had especially like coloring your highlights and your shadows and i want to do something i want to add some blues into my shadows here and then kind of take the blues out of my highlights. All right, let's see what I can do here for that. I'm just gonna adjust some of these manually. All right, and let's see what I can do for my reds here as well. Cool, I like that look also. We just got like a bunch of different looks here in this image, you know, making some of these visible or not visible. And the start, I, I think the most important thing is starting with a base that you really like. So this image as a base without all these curves adjustment layers, let's just shift click all those and hit command G. Still looks good. Like I, I like this base. It, we're not using these to like save the image. We're just using them to add a little bit more interest to the image, which I think is really important. Now, if this make the image a little bit brighter, like especially up there, what you can do is you can just duplicate one of these layers where it kind of darkened it up. And I'm gonna group that with itself, put a layer mask on that, make that layer mask black, and then paint white at about 40% right up there. And that's just gonna bring that back visible just in that area there to help darken out that area. But it's still gonna fade in naturally because we're still using this layer mask. Cool, and that's it guys. So this is kind of a new technique for me. Honestly, I don't edit most of my images in this way, but I like it. I think it looks really cool. What are some of the places, like, have you guys struggled with editing in Photoshop? Like, what are some of the things that you just like can't seem to get? Are there looks on the internet or things like that that you found and you're just like, oh, how did they make it look like that? I get emails a lot of the time and I wanna know, guys, leave it in the comment box below. Like, are there images or there techniques or something like that that you just can't get that you need help with? I'm gonna do my best to help you guys out. Guys, thanks so much for watching Flurn. If you're interested in Flurn Pro, which is like this times a million, you're gonna learn so much more. Um, we've got a Flurn Pro Phoenix that's on sale half price, released uh, yesterday and it's half price today again. So thanks so much for watching Flurn. I'll Flurn you later. Oh, I look so cool in my long white dress.